Welcome back. Another episode of the Premier Planet Podcast. Justin Barlow, Rock and Randy, and why don't we start off by talking about what happened this last Saturday, PPW 306. We had a... Uh, Wait, hold on, though. He, he asked me, are you ready? And as soon as he says, welcome back, I walk across the room to get an ashtray. Go yeah. ahead. You know, when you work with work with you as long as I have, you learn to adapt. Yeah, very personal. But, uh... Old wacky motherfucker. So this last Saturday, we had well, we had a really solid undercard, and then we saw an Olympiad freestyle match, which would be available to you guys who were paying three and five dollars a month. That was between Tim Castle and Not Bad Chad. What an impressive fucking match! Yep. You know, I, Chad is the most one of the most consistent motherfuckers. Consistent, you know, he's a guy. If he's gonna be late, he tells you he's gonna be late. I mean, he communicates like no other 30 and under today. And uh, when he's here, it's all about business. He'll never cause you a pubic hair of stress. And that motherfucker stepped up his actual grappling and wrestling game beyond anything I could have imagined. Yeah, so if you guys wanna see that match, it's gonna be on Patreon. Uh, Hopefully before this posts, um, no, it will be. Uh, Wednesday at noon, it's supposed to go up. So you guys should have access to it right now if you're paying three or five dollars. Then we had our All, all Japan well, Battle first, Royal. First, 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 enormous fucking surprises and upsets. Ventura had his first victory over. I don't fucking remember. That's why Ventura I gave you the was uh, Poncho. Unbelievable. And Eddie the Bruiser Cruz over zero gold. Mm-hmm. Boy, the fucking, those guys were elated, but so were the people in attendance. And I think you guys will be too when you see this shit. Yeah, and that's all up on uh, Premier Pro Wrestling, PivotShare.com. Also, we'll put some of it on YouTube eventually. Eventually, yeah. yeah. So keep your eyes out. So you go ahead and finish up, and then I'll tell you what I, I want the content to be today. Sure. Uh, so our All Japan Battle Royal, not an original concept, one that was incepted in Japan for uh, All Japan Pro I'm going to go ahead and call it an original concept. Now I'm going to steal. I'm going to plagiarize. If Joe Biden can do it, I can do it. <laughs> because what's so awesome about it is Baba obviously invented that shit, or whoever was booking for Baba, and then it was just forgotten about. It was just forgotten about. You know? But my God, what an exciting fucking concept. Mm-hmm. Battle Royal, but no over-the-top rope. Pinfall, pinfall, pinfall. You get eliminated by being pinned. And so if you go down, and we saw this pretty much during every pin on Saturday, one guy goes down, everybody else piles on because they want to they wanna lower the number of the guys who are in the ring as quick as possible. And there's no effing way you're kicking out of that with 12 guys on top of you. But what about Poncho? Unbelievable. Ponch- Poncho uh, capitalizes uh, uh. on everybody else's hard work and he ends up the winner. That was amazing. He had to redeem himself after losing to Eddie the Bruiser Cruz, a rookie, and you know, in his first victory, it was he had six matches. Unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, Ventura, he lost to Ventura. Oh, Eddie I'm sorry. Cruz beat zero gold. I don't know my head from my ass. Yeah, but anyway, what he also earned was a number one contendership, and I'm really, really looking forward to him versus Jose Acosta for the belt this Saturday night. Yeah, I almost can't believe I'm saying Poncho is in the main event for the world title. Well, you got to remember something. Poncho's first match was a main event for the world title. Was it? Yeah, I remember remember against Matt Vine. You know what? You're right. Matt Vine went in there to try to fuck shit up under a mask, and, uh, you know, Poncho's technical first match was a battle royal, but uh, when Matt Vine was dicking around pulling his mask off, Poncho hit him with a beautiful drop kick from the top rope and snuck up victory over the asshole. Remember now? I remember now. Yeah. Refresh my memory. Yeah, so I mean, you know, I, I can't wait to see this shit. Him, the, the way he's become, you know, he's one of my favorites to commentate. And Jose Acosta should be fucking one for the ages. Yeah, the self proclaimed Mr. Wrestling and the Guerrero the Warrior. That's going to be one Spanish, it's. Uh, Senor Luchador. Senor Luchador. Yeah, he Luch- should get his Luchador, sh- Luchadore. His Luch- shirt should be made to say that. Yeah, it should. Shirts. We got shirts, pro wrestling tees. If I could go take a look. Premier Pro Wrestling on pro wrestling tees. We got a lot of really cool shirts. I can't even keep track. There's so many on there. But you, there's something for everyone. Yeah. My favorite, which I'm surprised, don't be pussies, 
uh, we kick ass till we smell shit. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think I've seen any of those move because you guys are pussies. Yeah. Well, Just I know, kidding uh, about the pussies. I'm breaking balls. I know. I know. Uh, Ian, who's probably listening, has one. So thanks, Ian. Does he? Yeah. I think he was wearing it on Saturday. And then uh, main event was oh. Jose and Inestra for the world title. That that Great came that came about match. that came about because the week before Inestra actually pinned Jose in the Armageddon Gauntlet in and took the, the Armageddon middle. Championship in from him. In the middle. Yep. So Inestra earned himself a title shot. That one went to the third fall, and then it ended. At first, we didn't know why. Um, we knew there was a disqualification. But until the ref actually said we didn't know who had been disqualified, it had been a, it was Anestra who was disqualified. Yeah, they were tied up, and Anestra pulled the referee in front of Jose. Jose nails the referee. Anestra's thinking that uh, you know that Jose is going to get fucking disqualified. But at the end of the day, the referee said, "Oh hell no, you pull me in, asshole." So Jose retains. Mm -hmm. Now. Upside is the door is open, and I've already been hearing bitching about it from Anestra and his camp. Uh, he did not get pinned for that third fall, so he's going to have to well, to figure what, or he'll have to figure what out to get back in there and face Jose, and he's definitely a threat. Mm -hmm. So the content I wanted to speak on this week, I would like to, again, we talk about reality, people's nose for bullshit. Reality TV was a big deal when everybody thought it was real, right? Yep. Then reality TV becomes scripted bullshit, even scripted worse than World Wrestling Entertainment, you know? Or even worse, I'm not going to say worse, but wrestling. It's sillier. You know, you got Springer, some other Jagos, Moripovich. You know, Mike Douglas, the only yep. white man ever made me moist. <laughs> but anyway, you lose it, you know? You, then you watch uh, Jersey Shore. That was a huge show. Uh, the Teen Moms, all that bullshit. But pretty soon you figure out you're being fucking worked. There's not too much real about the reality TV. This is real, okay? I am going to speak to you about something that hits me today. And uh, I'm going to say it's airing our dirty laundry. But I'm not even going to say dirty laundry, Just I'm going to say our laundry. Because nothing we do or have is that dirty around here. We're not snakes, you know? You're not, I'm not, and weasels tend to weed themselves out. You know what I mean? Yep. Or we just kind of stop using them, you know? in any facet of the company. So, my issue is this. Justin and I have had issues as far as the symmetry of our commentary. Sometimes the shit's brilliant, you know, when we work together, stay in each other's lanes. I'm kind of a compelling guy to begin with. Uh, I've been told by more than one person, one guy I've known for 40 years, my oldest and dearest friend, then a complete fucking stranger in the same day. Man, you are an actual walking, talking children's program. There's more people that appreciate that than don't, even my naysayers, you know? So, I'm a guy that hits me today, I'm taking a shower, so I know this is good. Uh, I get kicked out of the house right before my 15th birthday. And I'm not bullshitting you. I mean, can you imagine when I looked at my kids when they were 14, almost 15, let's say 15, there's no fucking way. They couldn't fucking premiere, prepare a meal. They, they couldn't wash a dish. You know what I'm saying? C coming from a dishwasher to the fucking sink, having to do it by hand, you know? And I think, man, what kind of fucking parent would do that? You know what I mean? So anyway, uh, that's not the worst part. The worst part about it is, is that I didn't have any example to show me a right from wrong for guidance, direction, you know what I mean? My dad was an addict and an alcoholic, my mother too untreated, and she had them al -Anon or dependency issue, codependency issues enabling, okay? So I'm a babe in the fucking woods, good looking, small kid, tough kid, you know, the reason I was tough is I got the shit knocked out of me since I'm three years old. One of the first memories I have is running from my father getting smacked in the back of the head at three in an old house in Buffalo Grove, sailing into the corner I don't know if I broke my nose, but I just remember being shocked as a fuck because I was bleeding like a sieve. You know what I mean? Three years old, I remember that shit. So whatever, I'm not doing this for whatever. Me and my pop forgive each other. You know, I forgive him. My dad gets sober. When my dad gets sober, see, nobody's watching me. You know? I, I, I pretty much had to rule it a roost. Nobody gave a fuck what I did, and I was so far gone into my own addiction and alcoholism at that point. Uh, 
you know, it was something was gonna blow as a fucking powder keg, and it happened, you know. So fast forward, he's one of my best friends right now, the old man. He's 80, 78, he's almost 80, 78, 78 years old, Justin. How old's your father? 63. So your pop, right? And I'm not saying this to break anybody's anonymity. He's had some emotional issues, right? Yes. So what I'm saying is that era, man, a big part of the issues and why it took so long for me and my old man to get on this eye-to-eye, same-page bullshit, is uh, that generation or those generations, I'm going to go ahead and say that generation because it is almost 10 years apart, right? Uh, They don't do feelings, motherfucker. (laughs) <laughs> you know, so if you don't do feelings, and my old man, which is a weird fucking thing, is finally starting to fucking feel that asshole. I'm, I'm impressed, you know what I mean? He, he ain't going to hear this, so he can't hear me put him over. But I, I sincerely, I, I can't believe the growth in this motherfucker at seven, 78 years old. Where do you learn how to deal with feelings from if, right. if you've got nobody to teach you? Exactly. So one of my issues is, and one thing, a couple of things I did, A, my grandmother was one constant that loved me unconditionally when I would let her into my life, you know? Two, I knew I had the makings of a serial killer and I got sober real young and in recovery. In recovery, whatever, whatever, whatever. At the end of the day, I ain't judging nobody. Don't judge me. My shit is loosely based on Jesus' direct words the sermon from the Sermon on the Mount. Very simple principles for me. That's why I don't read the Bible and all that bullshit. But at the end of the day, I try to be a decent fucking human being. I'm never going to be Christ. Don't fucking think I got a Christ complex. I ain't saying shit like that. But that's my motherfucking mentor, you know. But I got sober young, and I learned the value, Justin, of uh, motherfucking therapy. Now, I'm 50 fucking five now. Since I'm 16, in one way, shape, or form... It hadn't been too many years except for the four to five years that I ignored my physical and mental health where I wasn't in therapy. Today, I have a shrink and I have a fucking therapist, you know? So it hits me. I know where you're at in therapy, and I'm not breaking like your anonymity because you said it yourself in the podcast that you're in therapy and you fucking love it, you know? Yeah. And, and you didn't say that shit to tell on yourself or whatever. You say that shit so motherfuckers can go, well, that bitch goes, I may need some. And fuck, who knows? It's going to save a life. It's going to improve a quality of life. You know what I'm saying? So back to the bullshit. When you first address your issues, which you're doing now, and your pop didn't drink, you know your pop loves you unconditional, but we know people from that era don't do feelings very well. But we do know your dad had his issues too, which regretfully, I'm sure, in some ways, there's no way he could have those issues and you not sometimes get, you know, during formidable years, maybe... You aren't the priority because he could do his best with what he had. You know what I'm saying to you? So you're in therapy. You're going through some shit. When you first start to fuck with your therapy and you got our issues, depression, anxiety, ETC primarily, you learn boundaries. And that's what you're learning, if I'm not mistaken. You're learning boundaries. Did the term boundaries come up yet? Yep. Okay. Boundaries, um, really just uh, setting a... Drawing a, drawing a map is kind of how it's uh, been explained to me. Well, yeah, okay, so let's talk about this. When you first start boundaries in therapy, and I can remember this like it was yesterday from, God, 25 years ago at least, harsh boundaries, okay? You start with harsh boundaries. Now, look at the term harsh. What's harsh mean? Critical, tough. Yeah, but it's not good, right? Harsh is not no, good. No, harsh is not good. But... When you're a homicidal or, or suicidal motherfucker or prone to it, harsh, you have to do it at first. And then you learn to set the healthy boundary, be a healthy person. And, 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 and for me, this shit was happening, dude, just as I was getting in and in the midst of motherfucking this industry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Harsh boundaries. I knew they're not going to fly in my industry, and this is what I wanted to do. I better fucking learn to apply motherfucking healthy boundaries. So, Saturday night, I'm stressed out. I'm whacked out. You're tired. You're fucking trying to balance shit. Um, I told you first. I'm the first one to say it how many months ago. Motherfucker, slow down. You're going to stress out. No, man, I'm not. I'm back to work, and I'll feel better, and I can do all this stuff. You know what I mean? 
Well, fuck yeah. You want to be able to. How much do you love wrestling? Love it. I've loved it since I was seven years old. Today, is it in your fucking soul? Yeah, definitely. Because you're never going to be good if it ain't in your soul. No, it's, you know? it's not a hobby. It's a passion. My first six months to a year in the business, wicked Nick Bockwinkle, one of the most underrated motherfuckers, and we're going to talk about that motherfucker at length in the near future, who is probably better than Rick fucking Flair because he didn't have the same match out there every night, and he could have a match with anybody, told me, kid, it was a pleasure watching you work. You have the makings to be one of the greats. Can you believe that? I never knew that. Yeah. But that's, oh my God, a yeah. compliment from Dude, on high. What are these? Goosebumps. Okay. Uh, this shit was said to me 30-something years ago. You know, I forgot it, too. I remember the shit in shower. Justin, so harsh boundary. A harsh boundary can save my life. If I tell my parents when things were, were what they were, motherfucker, lose my number for a while. In a lot of ways, that saved me from killing myself or someone else. And I wouldn't have killed my parents or hurt my parents in a physical way. But I would have found, like, let's say I've seen a lot of weird shit, like, a guy smack a girl in a parking lot, I don't know. I might have killed that guy. I would have at least beat the fucking ever-loving shit out of him. I would have gone too far. That's what I do and say, okay, God, like Michael the Archangel, he had it coming. Well, who the fuck am I to think that I know what God wants and God's will is and that gives me that power? You know what I mean? I can't live that way, especially because I'm taking care of a kid who is going to need a fucking heart transplant. i got to keep my shit together. I can't do these things, you know? Uh, back to the boundary, a healthy boundary. Now... You know, and we're not going to go into the detail because you can't go into detail. And if we go into detail about the, the things and the obstacles and the speed bumps that I have to fuck with just to get to the functioning point of Premier Pro Wrestling, Justin, it's only going to get worse because someone's going to take something personal. You know, though. I mean, verify for me to people listening the bullshit I got to deal with that nobody knows about or maybe you and a couple other people around here. Yeah. No, he's not lying. Could a mortal man fucking deal with that shit? No. Okay, so I'm going to go back to what you're saying. Why do I deal with that? Number one, it is in my fucking soul. Number two, I'm 55 years old. I am a master of this fucking industry as I am a master of, of the streets. I have street smart. I have my PhD in the motherfucking streets and human beings, okay? So, uh, I am going to say this in a way that is not meant in any personal way, but... So you became, and you put yourself there, somebody that you wanted me to be able to depend on. And me, when I say me, I'm not saying me, I'm saying us. From Eddie the Bruiser Cruz to Matt Vine. Somebody to depend on, right? Yeah. How come? Because you saw some of the bullshit. And you fucking like it. You're good at it. And you said yourself, motherfucker, this shit is in your soul. Right? Yeah. So... What I'm going to ask you is this in a, in a, in a, uh, let's call this, let's go ahead and fucking use this word. In a, a, an emotionally mature way, you need to lighten your load. It could mean life or death for you, but it could mean just your quality of life. Right? Yeah. You know, why don't you, and I'm not going to use his work name, why don't you and Tim alternate back and forth with the fucking editing? Yeah, we can do that. See, because it'll lighten your load. The reason I say this is because, and it's not a personal thing or a mean thing, and he probably won't even hear this shit, but I'm not saying that as a dig either. We're all going to pay a price. You know what I mean? If uh, that dependency is put there. So my thinking is, in, a, in as emotionally mature fashion as I can, man, for all of our sakes, especially my fucking sanity, so let's lighten the load, set a healthy boundary and say every other. Is that cool? You got a deal. Then I will come meet your ass here to do the podcast to save you some more bullshit on your shoulders. And let's say you have a fucking break coming up or a vacation. You just want to drive out to Wakanda to do the shit. Hey, hit me up. You know what I mean? But that I appreciate. Now, this is uh, not a, a fucking... We worked out a problem here with these motherfuckers. It can't get any more real than this. Okay? A dilemma. An issue, and we're all going to be better off for it, including the people that are behind this. And off the top of my head, I'm gonna say Tom Erdo, Art uh, CTA Tom, and fucking Ian, too, you know, uh, because the quality. The thing with us is, and it's sad, 
You don't know what I had to go through to get the one decent camera, which I hate to say it now is probably outdated. We need more than one camera. We, I get that. We need more than one camera operator that's good, and we need some motherfucking editing stuff. But you guys are looking past that and seeing it for what it is. The action in that ring is unsurpassed by anybody in the United States, even WWE, AEW, and Ring of Honor. Am I fucking lying? Not a single lie. So, man, I can't believe that we just fixed our bullshit and hopefully <laughs> set us like an example. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, as you can tell, I've obviously thought about this a lot since Saturday. And it finally hits me today rather than me be a bitch. The old bitch me would say, well, fuck Justin. He's just like this one and that one. It's all Rand. Rand's got to do everything. Everybody sucks but Rand. That ain't the case. That's not healthy either. And I say, no, you cocksucker. You see what this guy's done. He's proved to you what the fuck's what. Reiterate and understand. Put yourself, walk a mile in that motherfucker's shoes and remember where he's at getting therapy when you were there. You're an old prick and like you... For different reasons, he didn't have the, the, the resources like a lot of us don't today, and a lot of people your age and younger, to, to, to have decent relationships professionally, personally, romantically, you know? So whatever for whatever, I'm kind of gay right now for what we just did on this fucking podcast. And we promised people transparency. We promised them honesty. Thanks for getting that, because I didn't, I knew I'd be taking a chance doing it like this, because I didn't want you to feel attacked. No. You know? Good. Then I must have picked my words right. And I did pray before I said, I said God, just help me hear what I'm supposed to hear, say what I'm supposed to say. I sure as fuck hope this is a good idea, and I think it is. You know what I mean? No. Or I was. Mean, no, and I, I admit, you, to you told me, you know, I was going to end up burning out one day. <laughs> you, you, called, you called it. It took a few months, but, you know, I had those three months off because I broke my leg and I had all the spare yes. time. And I wanted to put it yes. towards something. We were doing the crowdless tapings and our... Our normal video guy was yes. uh, was out for those for the majority of those three months. Yes, wanted to put it towards that. Realized I was good at it. I genuinely enjoy it. But then you're all good at it. You enjoy it. You're consistent. You think of the little things. And just like these motherfuckers that wrestle at Premier Pro Wrestling, it's the little things that are going to translate in the end of the day to being something big and worth a fuck. Yeah, but you guys who are listening, trust me when I say, even when you love something to death. You can burn yourself out if you're stretching yourself. People too, too far. man. People yep. too. People too. Relationships again. You know what I mean? Yep. You know. So I, I, oh, but anyway. So I'm great. So the other thing I thought of how how many minutes are we into this shit? Uh, just crossed twenty. Oh, fucking great. What I was also thinking since we're on the motherfucking wall with this reality bullshit. This week we're running Friday and Saturday. This is your shit. The facts. Why in the fuck are we running Friday and Saturday? Because we want to bring people a exclusive content for patreon patreon is going to be uh the home of all of our friday tapings yes eventually we're going to start doing those things live once we get the uh once we get the hookup and everything i can't wait man yeah and then the other reason is well i guess there's maybe three reasons the other reason is so the guys in the ring can get some more ring time yeah at the end of this year with corona bullshit these assholes are going to have triple to quadruple the wrestling experience that these other assholes that they're competing against for spots World Wrestling Entertainment and this company will be way the fuck ahead of everyone just because of the ring time. And then who else is doing back-to-back -back tapings on top of also doing weekly tapings? Nobody. Nobody. You know what I mean? Nobody. Vince is doing it at NXT, but you know what? It ain't as compelling. I watched uh, some shit last night. Must have been Raw. Well, I watched about a third of Raw. Quarter, quarter of Raw. Not as compelling as Saturday night was. Even with guys that I know it can work and are fucking awesome, okay? Meaning uh, the Mexicans, I love... Uh, Garza and Carrillo? Yeah, Almas and Garza. Or fucking Almas. love them. Our guys and our matches were more compelling last Saturday night. Mm -hmm. In different ways. But fuck me, you know? Those guys are showing signs of not having the fucking ring time. The timing is off. And if and when this bullshit clears up and people can start running venues again, look for injuries to happen because you can't do the same shit without the fucking same timing. Yeah. No. I know for, for a fact myself physically, you know? Yeah, well, I know when we came back from the corona and we started running, we started running with the crowd again. I mean, we both talked about this. We were worried that a lot of guys were going to lose their timing. But 
having come off uh, having come off of running every week before the shutdown, yeah, there wasn't really a problem. And also, I booked that bullshit where the guys with timing could compensate for the guys that lack timing. See, that's how you do it. But these yeah. fucking people, like these indie tards and indie crap, they only know how to watch wrestling like a fan watches wrestling. Which is, there's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong is when you try, when, when, you, when you're in the way of a real wrestling company, the real fucking deal, which is what I can't stand. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so hard. You know, because of the competition and everybody in Bobby Joe's wrestling video channel and bullshit like that on YouTube, you know, we're at 40,000, which is enormous, but it's because of the oversaturation, why we're fucked and why I hate indie tarts. They're making my job harder. We should be at 100,000 if it wasn't for all that fucking competition. And, oh, I want to say this on the air, too, or on our podcast, too. On the air, I guess, right? Yeah. Uh, the Santino Brothers was right before us when it came to the end of the year's top, top YouTube channels. I figured out why. Those motherfuckers were on a, a, on a version of uh, fucking Storage Wars. <laughs> So, as you know, that, that fucking A&E built their fucking channel around Storage Wars. Because they cut the fucking live PD bullshit, that's their go-to now. It's five days a week of Storage Wars, so that tells you that's cheating. It ain't because they were compelling. People want to take a look and subscribe because they saw that bullshit on a top-rated fucking series. Right. That made me feel better, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe those motherfuckers will call us someday. But anyway, back to the bullshit. So, what do you say we finish this motherfucker up with a half-ass idea of how we're going to book Friday night so that people can see how my mind works? Yeah, go for it. Okay, I'll, so what do we the, got down for Friday? Already on the card, we have Matt Vine and, uh, and DeMarcio, Destroyer. They're going to go head-to-head. Uh, first match in a best-of-seven series. I like this. You know, I'll say it again. We have done this before, but we haven't done it to like WCW did. The reason WCW was kicking WWE's ass in the ratings was because they were opening with upper semi-main event guys on the fucking stick for 20 to 40 minutes. I am very sorry, but Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart's gifts are inside that ring doing action. They cannot do a promo for 20 to 40 minutes. While Vince was saying, I mean, while Turner was saying, let's show these motherfuckers what they haven't seen before. This asshole Alex Wright from Germany, this motherfucker from Mexico, uh, Eddie Guerrero, who's fucking does Japan, Mexican, and American style. Let's show them some fucking Japanese. Let's show them some motherfucking luchadors for the first 20 minutes while the other assholes were talking. Well, they got so comfortable they didn't want to turn the channel. That's when the Nielsen ratings came in and they got creamed. You can watch that shit, and I guarantee goddamn to you, Benoit, Chris Jericho, Eddie, Chavo, and Iceman D. Malenko, before they signed those guys to a decent contract rather than a per night, and a bunch of luchadors, they did a best of seven to develop the fucking talent. That's what's going on with DeMarcio and Vine. And I fucking love it. And I love the fact that Saturday night, the very next night after they go against each other in the second one of the best of seven, those motherfuckers are tagging up to face Gosling and Semsei for the tag titles. Yep. Talk yep. about a test of motherfucking character. And let's see if DeMarcio can step up and develop himself. We've handed that motherfucker the ball. Let's see if he'll run with that bitch. Yeah, and Chase and Sam are going to be fresh because they're not going to be here Friday night. Nope. But... I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna see some some surprises. I'm looking forward to that best of seven series. I really am. I am too. And let's go ahead and say this right now. I want to give that match a 30 minute. Fuck that. A 45 minute time limit. Hey, it sounds good to me. Who else now? I don't know if you've been paying attention on the board. I, I, I'm a fuck because Vine wrote it down, and I also know it was on the message board. Who else coming on Saturday? Saturday? Friday, Friday, sorry. Uh, can't remember off the top of my head. Now I don't get cell reception in here, so I can't pull it up. This is the shits, isn't it? <laughs> this is the shits. So let's see. All right, well, uh, uh, let me see if I can get a counter of, uh, and I'm going to say counter because I can. Oh, actually, I got a little bit. You asshole. I can, I can maybe pull you it up. You bullshitting motherfucker. Just I kidding. usually don't. Usually no, I think no I got signal. one too. I got one too. <laughs> usually it says no signal. 
Oh, damn it. I got all these stupid pulse bite morons. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, girlfriends. Oh, uh, here it is. See, you've got more than I got in this. But I got a, this is an iPhone 4. <laughs> I got a 6S. I feel like I'm way behind the curve. You're way ahead of me, motherfucker. So, guys who can make it on Friday. Jose. Ah. Uh, Pancho. Ah. Ventura. Ah. Matt Vine. All right. Tim Castle. Mm-hmm. Not Bad Chad. Mm-hmm. And DeMarcio. Uh-huh. And for referees, we've got Justin McKay and Derek Jones. I heard zero golds available, but I'm only going to book him on Friday if need be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we've got the champ. I didn't know the champ was available Friday, which is a great thing. See, that's what this motherfucker does, man. Jose is a, he's a veteran, man. He's a veteran. He's got the work ethic still. A lot of guys take an oath and forget about that motherfucking oath once they're out of the service, you know? That motherfucker didn't. And he shows it in everything that he does, personal and professional. You know what I mean? Nobody's fought, except for me, of course, that as hard as he did to get his fucking, to get his joint custody, man. And I love I love him for that, and I love those kids for that. And you can see those fucking kids, I know you've seen it, when they look mm -hmm. at dad. Oh, yeah. They know their motherfucking loved unconditionally, you know? And that's a guy that will never throw that shit in their face, you know? They're happy, healthy, little shits with big, bright, happy motherfucking eyes. It's so hard to be that young and to be that happy when you had that, those problems between your mom and dad. So I love that shit. It's a motherfucker. It's a motherfucker. <sighs> nobody, can, uh, nobody can deny that. Well, this is oh. the, the motherfucker I'm referring to is... You know it's a concept we haven't done for a while? What's that? Seven and seven. Oh, yeah. Good God. How long has that been? A long time since the... We never did it in since, front of a live crowd. Since the shutdown. So that was seven matches, seven minute time limits, right? Seven matches. Was that our... That, that was... Uh, seven matches, five minute time limits. And the other set, what was the other set? What was the other seven in that seven and seven? Minutes? Do it all in one night. That's right. Yeah, seven, seven matches, five minute time limits. All back to back to back. Yeah. You know, not seven and seven. Was it seven and seven? Seven what? and seven and seven. Like is that the, what like we the drink. Them? Yeah. Man, this is a motherfucker. I'm pretty sure it was seven minute time limits. That's why we called it the seven and seven. All right, I'm gonna throw it out to you. No, that's, that's just too much. That's too much with a crowd. So we're going to fucking shift the gears a little bit. This is going to be a lot of shit. A lot of shit. Let's see if they can step up. Fuck it. Pancho versus Jose. Non-title. Friday night, 7-7. Seven and seven. How's that? Five-minute time limits. How's that for a warm-up? There so, you go. So we got... So we got a best of seven series in the making, and then we're also going to have really a best of seven series all in one night between the champ and his challenger the no. night before they fight for the title. Not exactly. So for where I'm sitting, okay, this is where I'm sitting. I'm going like this. Regardless of what anybody motherfucking says on the internet, you've seen it, motherfucker. I've shown you the shit. How long does it take World Wrestling Entertainment to get back to me, even when they don't have the time to get back to me? hours to maybe a day sometimes five fucking minutes but anyway they get back to me at a time when they ain't hiring nobody okay from where i sit i watch this shit i will not say this is my friend man can you please help my friend i don't want to hear that shit i'm sorry that's life today that's business today especially with this pandemic i step up and i go and watch. I put people in the challenge. Okay, this is a motherfucker. Uh, seven and seven, and then the fucking two out of three falls the next night. Back to back, okay? And I see how these motherfuckers do, and I store it in the back of my mind, and when the time is right, bam -o, they're going to get attention. It's like having somebody present your movie or your music to motherfucking Sony, okay? That's what I'm going to do if these guys can step up and do it from where I sit. It also hits me, the fan in me, now that's compelling. If 
we were a television program that had a Friday night TV and had another night of the week TV, but especially a Friday and Saturday TV or pay-per-view. Fuck, that's great. You know what I mean? I want to see that shit and see what these motherfuckers are made of. Yeah. Oh, As a fan. Cool. So now we have, I guess, well, I guess it's uh, seven and five against. Uh, Just call it seven and seven. Seven asshole. and seven. Yeah. Pancho and Jose, and then match number one of the best of seven series between Matt Fine and Destroyer, 45-minute time limit. Isn't that more compelling than just throwing some shit together? I mean, seriously. Yeah, well, and so throwing, re- throwing rest breaks, like a... Like a, a minute. A, a one minute, yeah. One fucking minute. One, one minute long. Throw those in to the seven and seven. Those guys are going to go at least 40 minutes. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say, man. I mean, fuck, isn't that something? Oh, God. Who in the industry today does that and can do that with no timing? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, Raw's got this roster with all these motherfuckers on it. I mean, God bless, you know, WWE. But uh, even them, how many, better than, I bet, two-thirds of the roster isn't even working every week when they're used to working five house shows a week. Yeah. So this is going to be good shit to... uh, to emotionally invest in, folks, if you can be there. And it's not a penalty. I don't want to sell it like that. It's like, if you can't make it, don't motherfucking worry. Because you can catch it on Pivot Share and uh, Patreon. Friday's going to be all Patreon. Yeah, which I think is really cool because for five bucks, you can see that shit and save yourself the drive and dinner and gas and, you know, stressors that you get trying to get somewhere during Chicago land, Metro Chicago, Friday motherfucking traffic, you know what I mean? Yeah, now that now that the doors are reopened again, we can make that $5 tier truly worth the investment. Man, should, we should charge more. I've been told that by a lot of people, but for now, let's leave it at that. Beta testing phase. Yeah, we're still beta testing. And I think we're going to call Patreon beta until we start that live shit on beta. Yeah. You know? Oh, and that's we got to figure out what to charge for it and all that. But we're getting there. You know, it's building up a little nest egg to invest in things like internet connection and shit. You know, yep. the high, 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 high speed, you know. Yeah. So, uh, who else is on that thing now? Uh, sure. Well, we had uh, Tim Castle. Not bad, Chad. Uh, they're not working each other Friday? No, they're working Saturday. Save they're it. They're working Saturday. Yeah, they're working Saturday for the King of the Iron Man. 30 minutes. So, let's save it. And then yep. who else? I'm not going to pair them up Friday, too, because then it's hammered shit, see? You've got two great things with Vine versus uh, DeMarcio, and I really think it's a even, I mean, just as great, if not greater, non-title, Jose versus Pancho, 7-7. Seven seven. I love that shit. Then we have got Not Bad Chad and Tim Castle. We've got Ventura. Here we got Ventura. Okay. Uh, Vine, but he's already... Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the, those are the only other two guys is uh, Tim Castle and Not Bad Chad. And Ventura. And Ventura. Who else? My bad. That's going to be it. That's it for Friday? That's it for Friday. Well, guess what? Then we're going to do a motherfucking triple threat. Sounds good to me. So we got Castle, Ventura, and uh, Not Bad Chad. And then what we're going to do with that triple threat? The fella that wins that one, which will be not bad Chad versus Tim Castle versus Ventura, he's going to advance, and then we'll have to have two more matches the following Saturday, and they'll face Vine for the Challenge Pro Cup. Sounds good to me. How's that for booking? This is how we do it. Sounds good to me. Now, Fridays, Saturdays is very hard. When I was young, there was no can you be there bullshit. You were there or you were gone. You know what I mean? Um, And it was never a thought in my mind if I couldn't make it. I would blow off anything except for a funeral to make my bookings. And even I would make the funeral, do my booking, go back to the fucking funeral. That's what we did. That's how we rolled. You know what I mean? So it's not like that today, you know? Again, it goes back to what I think is people setting examples and just not being in touch with their heritage, which, you know, I don't know when heritage heritage which is history became a bad thing how the fuck else are you going to learn babies aren't born with knowledge you know what I mean but whatever it is what it is so this is what we're going to do and it's going to be a good fucking night on Friday and man here's the best things imagine how everybody's going to develop 
But imagine how a young, hungry motherfucking Ventura is going to develop. He's going to have more confidence than he has had, which he's had, he's been building. This motherfucker's going to get time out there in a, for his first triple threat. He's going to be excited, and attitude is going to be everything in that match. He's working Chad and Tim, which are cool. They got a competition going, but they got a healthy competition going. Oh, and yeah. I just like that shit together. I like the mix, you know? What do you think? I, I love it. So, no, let's end. Let me stop with the, or say this part before. No, you go ahead. I cut you off. It's rude. That's right. right. So, the triple threat. Yeah. The uh, what? What is it going to be? Is seven gonna be, and seven. Just call it that. Why does it, your your no, OCD the, can't handle that? No. no I'm, I'm, <laughs> Wait, talk, hold on, I'm hold talking on. about the uh, the. Oh, I took a risk farting it because it could have been real bad. Yeah. With my issues. Um. So the triple threat. So you should feel there, honored. There's going to be. No? Uh, just kidding. Huh? <laughs> I at, said, so you should feel honored or no? At, at this point, I just go to my happy place for a second. <laughs> like a fucking... Uh, happy uh, Gilmore. Yeah, yeah, happy grandma <laughs> and the midgets and all yeah. that shit, right? <laughs> Until Shooter McGavin shows up and starts making out with her in the kiss mask. <laughs> uh, go ahead, happy place. Uh, so the triple threat, we're going to have two winners in that who are going to go on the face line. Is that what you were saying? One winner. Then the following Saturday, not this Saturday, but the next Saturday, we'll have to have two triple threats. He's advancing. Oh, no, one triple. We don't have to have one triple threat. We have to have one. And then those two winners will fucking face fine that night. I love it. But that one guy, he's going to be at a deficit, but it's okay. Yeah. But, you know, so winner of the, trip, winner of the triple threat gets the first spot to face Vine for the Challenge Pro Cup. Yeah. Then we got the seven and seven, seven matches all in a row. One minute break in between, five minute time limits, non title, Jose and Poncho. And then, what else, what else do we say? I'm losing track here. It's okay, handsome dick. So we got then you've got the Marcio and Vine. That's right, the be- first match of the best of seven, 45 minute time limit. Yeah. That's how you fucking turn horse turds into rubies. And that's what we do here. We make chicken salad out of chicken shit. And I haven't even, I mean, I'm looking in my crystal ball as as we speak right now. I know that shit's going to be outstanding and there's going to be a lot of things that even I'm impressed with when you put these motherfuckers together. And I think they're going to be very jacked about the way they're booked. Oh, it's going to be impressive. It's going to be impressive. And I'm really, really gay as a euphemism for us fucking booking Friday night on this shit. Does it get any more real than that? Seriously. No. no, no. You know? Nobody, nobody, even before the corona, nobody else was doing that. That's what I'm saying. I don't think anybody does it. You know? We're not, we're not, at this point, we're not just ahead of the curve. I mean, we're miles, miles up the road from everybody else. Yep. And I will keep pushing. I will keep pushing. I will keep pushing. And I will not ask anybody here to do anything I haven't done. I'm not going to expect everybody to push as hard. But I am going to try to lead and set an example by the way I push for you guys. And, 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 and the guys that are here right now, you know, on this fucking roster, they respond to, to that. You know, yep. they respond to that. A lot of pride in these motherfuckers' work. And then Saturday, we got two titles on the line. Yeah. Castle's going to defend that King of the Iron Man against Not Bad Chad. 30 minutes, most falls wins. I am jacked to mm-hmm. see that shit after I saw those motherfuckers in that goddamn point match. Yeah, and watch the, watch the Olympiad freestyle match on Patreon. You guys are already subscribed to Patreon. If you're not already, drop three bucks. Drop three bucks to see this match. It's going to be available to three and five dollar. Yeah. Did then, you see a guy? Not that you mentioned this shit. Somebody on YouTube, and I don't think it's anybody I'm real familiar with. May know, may not. On YouTube, somebody put a comment that the goddamn Olympia. What's it called again? The Olympiad Freestyle is priceless. <laughs> I have to enunciate that one, otherwise. It Did runs you see together. that shit? No. Well, somebody motherfucker no, pull it up. commentated that shit. I want to say on your results. Hmm. I gotta see. Yeah, I gotta. I gotta check that out. Like they said, it's priceless or something really cool. I love that because that was the goal. You know what I mean? And I think it's somebody that hasn't weighed in before, so that makes me even happier. He fucking bought that shit to the point where he was very compelled Good. to say that shit. Good. You know, if he's a uh, Patreon patron or. If he's a fan that read the description and saw some of the excerpts or whatever, it might push his ass to, to, to patronize us, you know? Yeah. Why are people afraid of Patreon? Because it's new? 
I think maybe because it's new. Also, I mean, because of the, because of the corona and people being put out of work. I mean, people don't really have a lot oh, of people. A finances, lot of people, le- yeah, finances. a lot of people legitimately don't have a dollar or three dollars to spare. So to take some shit off of you, and you tell me what you think. Maybe fans tell us what you think. Patrons tell us what you think. Uh, I'm gonna do something with with my kid. I keep, God bless her, man. She sings the national anthem every week. My kid wants to be in music. And uh, my kid is fucking amazing. She's an amazing human being. Gianna Bell, translated in Italian, means beautiful gift from God. I picked that name. Before I found out this kid was going to be born with half of a fucking heart. You know? She's 18. She just turned 18 last week. Doing fucking phenomenal for a person with half of a heart. She's going to need a heart transplant. But not today. You know what I mean? No. So this this beautiful ass child sings the national anthem on Saturdays and she gets better and better every week. We don't kneel in this motherfucker. We don't kneel here. We sing the anthem. And the kid is also going to learn America the beautiful and God bless America too. You know? Because what a great opportunity for her if that's what she aspires to do. Because she has every week to to learn, you know, to sing these songs, which I love, you know? And what's different about that and what our guys are doing, learning how to work in front of a crowd? Just like you and me, yeah. you know? Yep. So, back to the bullshit. I'm going to do something once a week, figure out what to call it, where the kid can record it and pay, p- post it up so I don't have to hit you or anybody else up with just some little fill in the dots, bl- fill in the dots, fill in the blanks, m- maybe call it something as Ran sees it, some shit like that. I don't know. You know what I mean? So, she just tapes me much like the vlog addressing our bullshit you know mm-hmm. and then now uh, you know something short that we put on youtube and stream to you guys you know and i'll keep pimping and i'll find ways to make people more comfortable using patreon you know because i'm telling you I- i'm not hating on pivot share definitely not i'm definitely not hating on the people that subscribe to our pivot share the things i don't like about pivot share is we're lost in the cesspool of indies i can't believe some of the garbage on there but then again i can't blame them but there's just no fucking criteria of the stuff that they'll carry if it means making money the things i don't like on a business front to pay the percentages that we have to pay there's not that much left when everything's said and done you know what i'm saying patreon is the way to go world wrestling entertainment for a company patreon is the way to go World Wrestling Entertainment would be way better off than even hosting their own shit if they could put it on Patreon and keep it private, man, because with the percentage that they take, it's, uh, you can't, Vince couldn't do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? With the salaries, you know what I mean? And at the end of the day, we're only going to make that better and better too. Once we start going live, that's the way you go live today with pay-per-view is Patreon. Yep. You know? And we're going to do that shit. We just got to get people comfortable with it because it's no different than a subscription. It's probably easier and safer. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's going to be a good. Re- it's it's going to be a good reward for people. Yeah. Because they're all al- they're already paying. And I mean, did we talk about doing? Uh, did we talk about doing a separate tier for that? Well, you know what, we're going to have to. And then we're. I think what we got to do is start adding things like uh, 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 special sales. A percentage yeah. benefit off a of live event, ticket sales every week when they come, the ones that are patrons and can be here, and also we can up a little bit with the t-shirts, a little off the shirts, and we can also up with a little bit off the pivot share as well. You know what yeah. I mean? Because those are things that we do have control of. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. As yeah, as a benefit, you know, benefits. We're gonna have to charge a little bit more because essentially, essentially, that's what we're going to end up doing is doing Patreon, pay-per-view on Patreon, live. Yep. You know? Yeah, and that's going to be... That's, you know, we talked about this before. We're both nervous about it, but at the same time, both really excited to see it come to life. My, yeah, my nervousness now is going into excitement. I'm still nervous. We used to be 60 nervous, 40 not. It's probably 70 not, 30 nervous. <laughs> well, just know? like Patreon, it's going to have to go through uh, go through the beta testing. Yeah. And, and be patient with us. But either way, even if there's like, you're not going to get video glitches. That's the cool thing about it. The way we're doing it, 
There's no fucking glitches. There's no room for glitches. Like like IPPTV shit like that. They got issues. Not with Patreon and this other source, which I forget the name of, and I know you have too. But let's not throw it out there yet, because I don't want indie tars to stumble upon us go, Hey, man, let's steal I didn't do it first, man. Uh, there's no fucking glitches. You know? There's like a few seconds delay. You know what I mean? It's fucking outstanding. You know? Uh, they learned this shit... Uh, and there's some real reputable bands that are performing this way. You know what I mean? So, yep. man, I, I, I'm telling you. And then we got to figure out a cool name to call it. And then figure out what we charge for all this shit. You know what I mean? Get yep. creative. Yep. Listen to you guys, you know? Yeah. Give us feedback. Yeah. Give us feedback. I mean, we appreciate the glowing feedback. But by, but come at us with your come at us with ideas, with uh, critique. With uh, const- constructive criticism, don't yeah, be a dick. Yeah, but don't be a dick. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not a dick, you know. I could be a dick. I've every reason in the world to be a dick by today's fucking standards, but I, I, I'm i trying not to be. Sometimes I'm a dick, but I fix it quick. Like with you, I fix it quick, you know what I mean? With my kids, I fix it quick. Like these guys, I fix it quick, you know, because I don't want that. It's, it's counterproductive. And at the end of the day, we all have this goddamn common thread, us, no matter what you do for this company, which of course, first and foremost, is the goddamn wrestler, the performer. Second, the fans too. They want to see us grow. They get it, you know? Yeah, and our loyal fans are loyal to the core. Fucking unbelievable. Yeah. And I, there's no, there's no way to express that, uh, that appreciation we have. The gratitude. Yeah. You know? And oh my God, someday maybe we'll go and tell you exactly what the fuck I'm up against, you know? I had a hot. Well, how much time are we in? Uh, you gotta cross, go. Just cross 50 minutes. You gotta no. go, motherfucker. I Let's got, wrap it up. I got 25 minutes. Oh, you're good. Yeah. Okay. Uh. So I got diverticulitis. You know, right now I'm fucking hurting like a motherfucker. Last night was horrendous. I feel like I gave birth, but there's no joy at the end of the tunnel. The whole day yesterday, like Justin, I got up. I do what I do. I I I, I did my fucking 80 burpees. I did my motherfucking arms, and then I did 400 reps for abs. No fucking problem. The few f- few days I felt a little not myself. No, no corona bullshit. It's not that kind of symptom. Not fever. It's just like, huh, maybe I just need more sleep. You know what I mean? Could be depression. You never know. <laughs> you know? You have depression, right? No, no. Oh, okay, that a boy. No, but I know people who do, and it saps yeah, you, your energy. You don't know. It, it saps your energy. It makes you feel like you haven't slept enough. You fuck with yourself. Like, I take my meds. That's cool. But even with meds, it's still some days are a real struggle. So sometimes I can fool myself into a false sense of security with a couple more shots of espresso. Thank you for, to Puerto Rico for that shit. Uh, but anyway, all of a sudden, i got to run a lot of errands. I don't want to do these fucking errands. i got to run errands like a motherfucker, man. i got to go all the way out to Two stops in Waukegan in the afternoon. Monday traffic. Fucking horrendous. All of a sudden, more I get close, I'm like, God damn, feels like I got shot in the fucking belly button, below the belly button. I've had four umbilical hernias, man. I had all four fixed on a local with just fucking Novocaine because I didn't want the dope in my system. Okay? This shit hurt worse than that. When I got home, oh my fucking God, everything hurt. But it felt like I was being stabbed with a hot knife. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. So today I'm dragging ass from that shit, but I'm turning it into a positive. And again, I'm trying to set an example for you guys to show. Okay, we're fucked up. You might be fucked up. Can you make it? Push yourselves a little bit. Then I can say, hey, I did it too, I understand. Or, hey, come on, man, dig deep. If I can do it, you can do it. Yep. You know what I mean? Leadership by example. It's one reason I've stuck around here for as long as I have. Thanks for saying Cause, that. Cause, well, because you said it yourself. You won't ask any of us to do something that you haven't already done. Yeah, in the ring or outside it, you know. And that's not, they're, they're, that doesn't leave a lot of room for whatever, you know. I still, I'm not hating on these guys. I have still yet to see one person who's still here or who's not here, and this isn't me putting myself over, work as hard as I did. When I got here... Everything I did, I knew was bring me a step closer, bring me a step closer, bring me a step closer to being great, you know, as a worker. And I love, like, last week I got in the ring, you weren't here, I don't know if you heard about it, probably not, it doesn't make a fuck. 
I was in the ring for like three minutes because I'm thinking with our guys grappling, okay? Grappling. We are a wrestling company. We are going to hone our skills. Our skills will be habit. The man of a thousand holds will be a shoot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, it sounds funny, but wasn't that Jericho's scam uh, or gimmick once as a, as a rib, but it's actually Dean Malenko's shoot gimmick? Yeah, it was... Uh, uh, well, Malenko always called himself the man of a thousand holds. Jericho, when they were having their feud, came along and said, "Well, I'm the man of a thousand four holds," and that's when <laughs> that, that's when the that's when the that's when that uh, big list came out. You know, mid '90s they had a whole yeah, roll yeah. of you know dot matrix it was a computer scroll. paper. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then it's okay. Okay. They went to commercial. They come back. He's the whole still show. reading the thing. The whole I, show, right? Like, e like every third hold is an arm bar. <laughs> but, he, but he had some funny shit in there. One was yeah. uh, the, the moss-covered three-legged family, family gridunzel. That's funny, <laughs> man. But uh, the point I'm trying to make is that when I worked, when I was in that ring and I could be, it's so funny because I get in there sometimes and, and, and one of our referees said, holy fuck. He said, I'm not trying to suck your ass, which I hate. Everybody that knows me knows I hate nut swingers. Nobody swings from your nuts unless there's strings attached, okay? No, sir, absolutely not, sir. There's always, <laughs> there's always strings attached. It never plays out well. I have nut swingers that hate me as much as they swing from my nuts at the same time. So we swing them from my nuts and put a thumb in my fucking asshole. And some of them would jag off and go all the way up to their fucking elbow into my asshole. So I don't respond to nut swingers, you know? But uh, I'm a fucking good worker, you know? Been in, haven't been in the ring in I don't know how long. So I'm in there showing some of our top guys, I'm not going to say whom, uh, how to work. That three minutes, every motherfucker in this place was watching me, and the ref says to me a few days later, I was like, fuck, so that's how it's done. Hey, you know what I mean? This is the same guy like you that, that has been a wrestling fan all his life. You know what I mean? I, I just can't do it. You know, I felt, I know my neck is hanging by a thread. I just got, well, the CD, I should have it in my mailbox. My C2 through C7 are fucked up. And I think it's from one stupid thing that I did as a kid. You know, but I, I fractured my neck and never got it fixed. So it's fucked up. A, a, and I'm just not going to be one of those guys because look at La Parca, the original. You know, that's what happened to him. It, he, he, he did the one half speed suicide dive and the neck snapped dead, you know. And then there was another guy that I think Ray worked the same thing, dead. I don't want to put that on anybody else and I don't want to go out that way. <laughs> you know. So I'm going to sit here where I'm at and do what I got to do from time to time. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that I'll never ask somebody to do something I haven't done, and I'll never push them to the point to do stupid shit like I had done. But those are things that I felt I had to do to get over at my size. I'm telling you right now, 210 pounds was a shrimp in this industry when I was in my money-making years. A shrimp, a fucking shrimp. You talk about the late 80s, so. Late 80s, early 90s. You know, when did uh, those guys, the little guys, start at Turner? Uh, Mid-90s. That's uh, what I'm saying. Really, they did. So, some of them came in before before they launched Nitro. Like, I think Alex Wright was there maybe in 90. He's not a shrimp. But, he's uh, not a shrimp, dude. Now, he's skinny, but that guy legit is probably 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, is he? Yeah. Because they, they always uh He was just put very him in, thin with the, at the waist. They always know? put him in with the cruiser weights. Look so. at how much taller he was. You know and what then, I mean? Uh, I bet he was two thirty. But the cruiserweights didn't really get off the ground until uh, they started until they started running nitro. Yeah. So that was ninety five when that kicked yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. There were people coming to me in ninety five saying I should have tried to get hired. I thought about it, but I already had one knee rebuilt, you know what I mean? I, I couldn't have, I probably couldn't have, uh, maybe I could've, I don't know. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, who gives a fuck? <laughs> At this point. But the point I'm trying to make is is that uh you know, knowing this shit from inside out. You know, when I was at, at, at TNA Wrestling as production manager, I was thinking about this today, too, and what we were talking about. You know, Vine, it, it, it's funny, but it's not funny with the way uh, Bill Watts was when he went to work for Turner. Uh, I knew how to turn it off better than Bill did. You know, I wouldn't put my feet up on the table and fart during the conference call on Thursdays. You might now, but... No, I, I wouldn't do that in that setting. You know, they were paying me 90, 95 grand a year, whatever the fuck it was. Uh, but 
in the same talk, I'd be like, Jesus Christ, somebody turned some music on. I can't take it. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, in the office, you know. But uh, the point I'm trying to make is, is that this kid, Steve Godfrey, he handled the press for TNA Wrestling. And he was a sharp guy. And I used to love him, too, because I think I helped him say things like, like uh, he, he had the fucking... <laughs> he had to handle the press during the goddamn uh, Pac-Man Jones bullshit. Oh, Jesus. You know? And he would get sarcastic and be like, now what am I supposed to do with this? You know what I mean? But there was a lot of people there that really wanted to see me fail in the infrastructure. Dixie, Andy Barden, and their people. You know? Uh, and I heard the second, second or third... Do a second or third party that would say... Godfrey just hit the nail on the head with you. I go, what do you mean? He go, Randy Ritchie can do whatever the fuck he wants here because the bottom line, he's fucking good and there's nobody better for the job. You know what I mean? I thought, wow, I didn't even think the guy liked me. But I don't think you have to like me to say something like that. No. I knew they were setting me up when they hired Steve Small and I had the goddamn television almost self-sustaining when we went to two hours on, on, uh, on Viacom. It was just a matter of time. You know what I mean? When he didn't need me, that's what happened. And the, the words that got me fired were uh, somebody came by. The two things that got me fired. One, we were paying like fucking an insane amount of money. Th this, this lighting company comes in, right? They set the fucking lights up one time and then maintain the lights. It's really not that hard. You know, you see, knock on wood, I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it. I got these lights hung in here. We're looking at the lights right now, right? How often do I got to go up there and change a bulb or adjust? Handful of times a year, right? Yeah. These motherfuckers are charging rare. like fucking ten thousand dollars a month. Okay, you rent their lights, but there's a maintenance agreement too. So I knew that on the sly, the lighting director who set that deal up was getting the percentage of that shit kickback. You know what I mean? If my job was to save money and make sense of this shit, Justin, every dime we had should have been going into the fucking product, the company. Well, I was taking bids on the lights, and I fucking smartened up quick and realized we were paying double what anyone else would have charged us, you know? But that ruffled some fucking feathers of the people that were getting kickbacks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That and the fact that uh, somebody came in looking for small, and I said, he's over there behind wherever the fuck the set was. And then the guy came back and goes, I can't find him. He, he, right over there, you know? And now I'm in the middle of doing things because I'm a hands-on guy. I lead by example when I was doing production. I'd pick up the fucking broom. I'd pick up the wet dry vex. I'd do climb under the ring. You know what I mean? Do whatever the fuck. So there's no one to blame for the real important shit except me. You know what I mean? I couldn't bitch in somebody and say, You asshole! I fucked up if I fucked up. Certain things you do, the sun must rise and set in your ass. You know what I mean? If it's my shit or somebody else paying me because if you're paying me, I'm doing it like it's my shit, right? I said... He lives over there. He looks like Grandpa Munster. Well, I knew four <laughs> days later I got fired. <laughs> you know, everybody heard it and everybody laughed, and I knew that motherfucker was lame for me anyway. It just, uh, he thought he had that two hours down without me because he couldn't handle that two hours on his own. You know what I mean? Uh, right. But whatever. I mean, it played out the way it was supposed to, and thank God it did. I mean, my hopes and dreams were crushed because I thought we were making a difference in a viable alternative. You know what I mean? Yep. To Vince, and we were. The ratings don't lie, Justin. Uh, look at it. Read it. Look at the fucking ratings. Highest uh, ratings next to Kimbo Slice versus uh, Roy Nelson when the Ultimate Fighter was on Viacom or Spike. You know what I mean? Second highest ratings only to that episode. You know what I mean? Um, you know, but they shit came. It is what it is. They fucked themselves. We had opportunity to affect a lot of people's lives in a positive way and give the fans something that they obviously are responding to. You know what I mean? Yeah, but on the plus side, you didn't go down with the sinking ship. No, I was one of the first to go, and then I seen everybody else with an original thought that worked go right after me, you know? Yep. And look what happened to that company. Yeah, hey, they get what they deserve, you know? Yep. But you know what, that's going to, I think that'll be good for uh, YouTube this week. What do you think? Up to you, dog. Yep. I think. I think that'll be compelling. All right, so let's surmise. And that is a fucking word. I remember arguing with Mr. Burns about surmise <laughs> being a word. Yeah, that's no, a word. You said surmise. I go, motherfucker, I said surmise. Surmise. It's not even a word. I go, yes, it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not educated, but I know. I, I, I fucking, my reading comprehension is amazing. It's like fucking mouth. But anyway, uh, 
Yes, it's surmise. So let's surmise. What have we done today? First, we fixed our personal shit. Personal attached to our professional shit. Yeah, not like you said, not dirty laundry, but laundry. Yeah, and we learned, uh, all of us. Healthy boundaries. Healthy Healthy boundaries, motherfuckers. Harsh boundaries you have to if it's going to save your life or your health. (laughs) You know what I mean? But the goal is to learn healthy boundaries, you know? What else? Uh, we talked about what's we talked about what happened last Saturday, and then we also talked Booking. about and previewed what's yeah. happening this Friday, this Friday and Saturday again. Friday only on Patreon if you can't make it to the studio. And booking 101 live right in front of you guys, an inside look at how my fucking brain works or what's left of it. We learned don't eat fucking pork rinds if you got diverticula. Mm-hmm. It's not listed anywhere, but don't do it. Somebody give me a bag of these motherfucking pork rinds, charones. I love fucking chorones, but guess who can't fucking eat them, dude? I dabble a little bit, couple, hmm, I feel okay, I'm gonna have some more. Saturday mm-hmm. night I came home, ate the fucking bottom of the bag with all the good shit in it. The good shit turned out to be the bad shit, because it yeah. almost killed me last time, bro. Yeah. Yeah, diver- <laughs> diverticulitis is, uh, yeah, that's nothing to, uh, that's nothing to mess with. No, it could kill you. I, I fucking didn't yeah. know it could be that bad till now. Oh, but. yeah. And, uh, you know, fuck, don't be afraid of Patreon. Sh- sh- if you can, share that shit. I've had a lot of people tell me, at least three p- people tell me about they love the fucking format of this podcast, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This, this podcast is getting there. I mean, yeah. I mean, he- I mean, hell, as soon as Savio found out you had a podcast, he asked, when can I be on? Fucking A, man. <laughs> Next week, we should talk about handsome Jimmy Valiant. Let's do it. I love him. Yeah, I've heard so many handsome Jimmy stories from you, but uh, I'm well, sure there's not. so many, uh, so many others you got in the pocket. Let's see if he's home. If he's home, he can go like this. Hi. And then we'll close out with that. He's calling up handsome Jimmy right now. Let's we'll see if he's home. Hi. Hello. Hi, Angel. Is Boogie home? <laughs> well, God bless him. Good. That's how he's going to stay healthy, right? <laughs> That's how it works for him, anyway. Would you do me a favor and just tell him this tomorrow? Boom, yeah, boom. Tell, him tell him this, please. Boom, 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 <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> okay, Randy. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Love you. I'll tell him you called, okay? Talk to you later, hon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Boogie's wife. Yeah, Angel is a fucking angel. Boogie is, man, That's a, you want to talk about a motherfucking creature or habit. We are going to get that motherfucker on here, and you're going to lose your shit. So it's 621 in Roanoke, Virginia. Actually, Roanoke area, goddammit, I can't remember the name of the town. But anyway, Boogie's in bed. He's, that's it. He's done for the night, you know. But I'm telling oh, wait, i got to save this number. We're going to get Boogie on this shit, and, and everybody has to know. If you're a fan, if you're a wrestler, you have to get in touch with your lineage. This motherfucker is one of the greats. Everybody in the industry, from Hogan to, to fucking Dwayne The Rock Johnson, has stolen from Boogie. So with that, I think we'll take it home for this week. You guys got uh, already previewed some content that's coming up, uh, maybe not next week, but no, no, we said we were going to talk about Boogie next week. Yeah, let's do it, man, because this is a guy that needs to be honored. Yeah, so we'll talk about uh, Boogie Woogie, Handsome Jimmy Valiant next week. I'm looking forward to that. Oh. Because like I said, I've heard stories, but I'm sure you got so many more in the pocket. I don't know why he took me under his wing and loved me, but he really did, you know, and I would be lost as a man. I would be lost as a wrestler if it hadn't been. Yeah. And remember, we're coming your way this Friday and Saturday. This is going to post on Friday at noon, so you still got time. When you hear this, to come down to the studio, we're going to have that 7-7 seven and seven, Poncho and Jose non-title the night before they go at it for the title. We're going to have a triple threat, Ventura, Not Bad Chad, and Tim Castle on Friday. Guy who wins that one's going to get the first spot for the week after to face Matt Vine for that Challenge Pro Championship. Love it. Loves yep. it, as Paris Hilton would say. Loves it. Loves and then it, we've got, and then uh, Friday we've got the first match in the 7-7. Seven and seven between Matt Vine and Destroyer, DeMarcio, 45-minute time limit. Then Saturday, Jose and Poncho are going to go at it in the main two out of three falls for the title. 
We're going to have King of the Iron Man, Tim Castle, against Not Bad Chad for that King of the Iron Man crown. 30 minutes, most falls within that 30 minutes. Or Jose and Poncho. <laughs> and then we're going to have... I'm going to love it! And then we're going to have... Uh, what, what did we say? We're going to have the... Uh, Triple threat? No, tag team championship. Oh, Saturday you're talking yeah, sa about. I'm yeah. sorry, dog. Yeah, Saturday. So that'll be uh, Chase and Sem defending against Vine and DeMarcio one night after Vine and DeMarcio do that first match in the 7-7 seven and seven series. So a lot of stuff coming your way this weekend. And remember, Friday night's only going to be for Patreon. So right now, if you're subscribed at $1, we love you to death. Thank you so much. But if you want to see I'm telling this you, it's going to be worth it to you to up the ante a little bit. Yeah, if you, you know what? You could whack it down next month if you want. Maybe up the ante and then uh, freaking watch. Decide for yourself. Yeah. Because I'm going to get, we're going to give you fucking your money's worth. Trust me. Yeah, we can test it out. We can test it out. Um, so three right now, $3. It's going to get you a few of the matches. Is that buggy? No. And then, oh, you uh, go ahead. I'm going to take this. All right. So $3, you're going to get some of the matches from Friday, but $5, it's going to get you the whole taping from Friday night. Then, of course, Saturday night's going to be available on Pivot Share. And don't forget to check us out everywhere else. Hit us up on Insta. Follow us on Facebook. Don't forget to check out ProWrestlingTees.com. we got so many shirts in stock right now. Yes. We just Fucking came, A. Chase, uh, Chase just came out with one. Big Stick Energy. Yes. And then, uh, of course, we got We Kick Ass Till We Smell And Marga, shit. Marga. Marga. I just bought my Marga shirt. It was I on the post it, yeah. show. Yeah. Mixed it with the uh, with the blue uh, button-up shirt. Got a little patriotic. Nice. I got, and, I, and I haven't gotten any dirty looks for it yet. People thinking that it's uh, Marga. I think they see the W. So. Oh, my God. I got stories. But I, I we'll talk about that another time. Yeah. So thank you guys again for being part of our Patreon. Check us out Friday and Saturday. You know how good I feel selling... We're selling the fucking truth. We're entertaining, actually, honestly, and truly being ourselves in the way we do shit. Does it get any more real? I love that. Nope. Nope. And we promised this was going to get real, so we thank you guys for affirming that you're enjoying this real content. Because it's off, it's off the cuff. We don't plan this. Nope. And we'll see you guys next week. Happy 